so friends let's consider one more example based on system of coplanar concurrent forces so here if you see we have got a system of forces these forces are acting in the xy plane this is x axis and this is y axis so we have got a force of 200 newton another force of 120 newton and this one is 50 newton and this one is 100 newton so all of these four forces are acting in a single xy plane and they are going to pass through same common point let me call this point as point o so this is an example of system of coplanar concurrent forces so to find the resultant of system of forces we have to resolve each force along x and y direction okay but if you see here we don't know the angle made by this 200 newton with x axis okay similarly we don't know the angle made by 120 newton with x axis or y axis okay so first of all we need to calculate this angle as well as this angle so let me call this angle as theta 1 and this angle as theta 2 so we have to first calculate these angles theta 1 and theta 2 so the calculation part is very simple if you see here so we have got a triangle over here and this value is given as 1 and this value is given as 2 so for this triangle we can find out theta 1 as tan inverse of this is 1 and this is 2 so we can say 1 divided by 2 so this value will be 26.56 degrees okay and similarly we can find out the value of theta 2 which is tan inverse of so it is 4 by 3 so we can write down 4 by 3 so this value will be 53.13 degrees so we are able to find this angle theta 1 and this angle theta 2 so theta 1 is 26.56 and theta 2 is 53.13 degrees okay so now we'll proceed from here so we got the value of theta 1 so this angle which we called as theta 1 so we got the value of theta 1 as 26.56 and this angle which we called as theta 2 we got as 53.13 degrees okay so let me name them so i'm going to call this force as f1 this force is f2 let me call this as f3 and this one is f4 we know the angles made by the forces with respect to the given axis so with respect to x or y axis okay so we got theta 1 theta 2 and this angle is 60 degree this is 40 degree now so now the next step is to resolve these forces along x and y direction so if you see here we have resolved these forces that, that is 200 120 50 and 100 along x and y direction now if you see this particular force which is 200 newton so this angle we have got as how much so this angle we got as theta 1 is 26.56 and for this force 120 newton this angle we got as 53.13 now we can resolve this particular force along x and y direction so this along x direction it will be 200 cos 26.56 and along y direction it will be 200 sin 26.56 similarly this also we can resolve so it is 120 so along x direction it will be 120 cos 53.13 and along y direction this is along x direction so along y direction it will be 120 into sin 53.13 similarly we can resolve this force also along x direction so since this angle is 60 this also will be 60 so this will be 50 cos 60 degrees and this will be along y direction will be 50 sin 60 degrees now here this angle is 40 so this angle is also going to be 40 so i can resolve 100 along x direction as 100 cos 40 and along y direction as 100 sin 40 
so we have resolved all the given forces along x direction y direction okay here also we resolved along here also this force has been resolved along x direction along y direction this one is also resolved along x direction along y direction and similarly this one is also resolved along x and y direction you can see okay so all the forces have been resolved along x and y direction now we will write down all the forces and their components along x and y direction so f1 force f1 you can see it is 200 newton so force f1 is 200 newton and its x component is 200 cos 26.56 it is acting towards right so it is positive direction of x axis so it is going to be positive so it is plus 200 cos 26.56 similarly the y component is 200 sine 26.56 it is acting in the positive direction of y axis so it is also positive so 200 sine 26.56 now we will take force f2 which is 120 newton so its x component is acting towards left that means negative direction of x axis so it is negative so it is minus 120 cos 53.13 and its y component is acting in the upward direction that is positive direction of y axis so it is positive so it is going to be positive friends so plus 120 sin 53.13 sin convention is very important now f3 let's see f3 so f3 is 50 newton so we'll write down 50 newton as here and its x component is 50 cos 60 you can see here it is acting towards negative direction of x axis so it is going to be negative so minus 50 cos 60 and if you see its y component it is acting downward so negative direction of y axis so it is again negative so minus 50 sin 60 And last the force F4 which is 100 Newton so its X component is towards positive direction of X axis so it is positive plus 100 cos 40 and its Y component is acting in the negative direction of Y axis so it is going to be minus so we have listed down all the forces their X components and their Y components now we have to find the sum of all X components and sum of all y components so to find sum of all x components we have to add all this together so when you add all this together you will get the value of summation of f of x so this summation of f of x will be 158.50 okay so this value is going to be 158.50 newtons the unit is newton i'm not writing unit here so everywhere we are going to follow same unit so it is newton and here also it is in the newton okay so summation of f of x you are going to get 158.50 newtons similarly if you add all these values together you will be getting the value of summation of f of x. so after calculation if you add these values you will be getting summation of f of summation of f of y as 77.85 newtons so 77.85 so we got the value of summation of f of x and summation of f of y now we have to find the resultant force the magnitude of resultant force that is 158.5 square plus 77.85 square so you will get the value of resultant value of the magnitude of resultant as 176.56 newtons okay so we got the magnitude of resultant force we can also find the direction of resultant force and the direction of resultant force which is given by theta so the direction of resultant force is given by theta which is tan inverse of summation of f of y upon summation of f of x so this value will turn out to be theta equals tan inverse of 77.85 
डिवाइडेड बाय 158.50 सो इफ यू सॉल्व दिस द वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा इज गोइंग टू बी 26.16 डिग्रीज सो द वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा इज गोइंग टू बी 26.16 डिग्रीज ओके सो वी गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ रिजल्टेंट ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड एज 176.56 न्यूटन and the direction of the resultant by theta which is given by theta which is 26.16 degrees okay so this is the procedure we are going to use to find the resultant of given system of coplanar concurrent forces so thank you very much